<sighs> so you're probably wondering how I got myself into the situation. <laughs> the answer is I don't know. Okay. Good morning from Maria Ham, Oland. I'm super excited. The sunrise was so gorgeous. When you come here, make sure you see the sunrise. But for today's video, we're going to be talking about what can you do here in Oland and what is Oland? Is it a part of Finland? Is it a part of Sweden? Why do they speak Swedish here? While we're here, we're going to be spending time in Gurby, which is a small village where I'm currently at. A beautiful, beautiful Airbnb, the host. He is so amazing. That is most old tradition in Oland. Mother in house, in the kitchen, and wanted that uh, people who was working on the fields come into porridge. We're gonna see a fortress destroyed by the British and the French armies, Castel Homsla. Then we're gonna be going to Durgasan Beach, which I've been told it feels like you're it feels like you're taking a swim with the penguins in Antarctica. Then we're gonna be headed up north to Yeta, which is this beautiful, beautiful area up in the northern part of Oland. Then of course we're going to end this off in Meriaham. Real quick, we're gonna talk about transportation when you're here in Oland car and bike so if you're trying to see all the islands in a week or four days rent a car if you're trying to see the islands by sitting back on your bike taking your time taking all the nature then you got to rent a bike or I'd recommend renting a bike but you know we chose a car because we don't have that much time all right. So we made it to our first stop here in Oland, and this is a castle from the 13th century, and it has so much history when the Swedish crown actually owned Oland slash Finland, and this castle has been burned down multiple times, has been through multiple battles from when the Russians also took this place. So it just has so much history here, and if you come to Oland, this has to be one of your... Um, it has to be one of the places you come to. It was only eight euros to get in and they do offer guided tours if you do want to take a guided tour of this castle. The last thing about this castle is historically there was a moat surrounding it and you can still see the water surrounding part of the castle today. But this needs to be on your itinerary if you're coming here to Oland. We're going to head to the next spot now and see uh, what else does Oland have to offer. So after you finish leaving, like after you finish looking at the castle, make sure you actually come to this garden area. It's very beautiful. I don't know how to say the name, so I'm just going to put it right here. But very beautiful, old, wooden, red buildings. And it just really gives you the essence of the olden days, like the 1300s, the 1400s, 1500s. That's really what this castle feels like compared to other places. And it's just so much nature out here. Oland, beautiful. Whenever you finish at the castle, head down the road. It's a 10 minute drive and you can see this fortress. I recommend it. Like I said, there's not a lot here, but it is very beautiful. So we're here at Brumasun Fortress, which was built in the 1800s and it had over 250 rooms. Instead of just being a fort, it was like a small town. Over 2,500 people could live here, but sadly the fortress was destroyed in the middle of the 1800s by the French and the British that all came tumbling down. This is during the time whenever the Russians actually owned Finland. So this fortress had so many, this fortress housed soldiers, people, and it had a bakery, wells. It really was truly a small town back in its day. This is what the fort used to look like. And it even had a church. Religion was so important. Another thing you must try whenever you are here in Oland is the Oland pancake. I don't know what's in it, but it looks really good, so let's, let's see if it's good. I'm gonna get this cream. Oh, this is amazing pie, hold on, or a pancake, like, oh wow. You should have got one. This is good. So we just made it to our cottage here in Oland, and it is so beautiful. Whenever you're traveling the world, make sure that you stay at an Airbnb. Don't always just stay at a hostel. Don't always just stay in a hotel. I'm, I just feel like when you stay at an Airbnb and the guest actually lives on the property, like right there, it can be the best experience you can have. Book a cottage whenever you do come here, because I'm telling you guys, it's the thing to do when you come to Oland. Gonna go in this cold water. I guess I'll try to be like a Finn here while I'm in uh, Finland, I guess. 
but I hope I survive. I'm telling you, if you come to Oland, you will die in the freezing water. I can't feel myself at all. Okay. I'm telling you, when you come to Oland, you must get in the cold water. It sucks, I'm telling you. I feel like all the blood has just left my body and I'm gonna go find a sauna now. Uh, every time when I sitting in my sauna there upstairs that uh, in house that I thinking I, I have electric sauna there. Mm -hmm. Oh I want out from here. I went out in the garden and have wooden sauna. But I hadn't. But three years ago, I said, now we'll start that then. After jumping in the sea here in Olin, what better way to end day one than in a sauna? So let's, uh, let's get in the sauna. <laughs> I don't know why I'm shivering so much, but it does feel good in a sauna. <laughs> yeah. This has to be on your list whenever you come to Olin. Stopping here at this cafe, I can't say the name, so right there. But stopping at this cafe, it's on a hilltop. It is so beautiful. Like just, just look at her. And you have the Finnish, you have the Swede, Sweden, you have the Finnish and the Sweden flag, and also the Olin flag. And for those of you guys who don't know, Olin is situated right between Sweden and Finland, and there is a huge history there. When Sweden owned Finland, and then when Finland gained its independence from Russia, who owned Olin, and that is how we get Olin, an autonomous state here, split between Sweden and Finland. But just look at this water. If you have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a wife, a husband, come here. If you don't, come here by yourself and just enjoy some alone time. When you're on this trail here in Yatta, this is probably the most important part is coming to see the caves. So keep following, keep following these arrows because towards the end of the trail, it will lead you to one of these caves. And it talks about during the history of the great unrest in 1714, 1715, how the villagers of Yatta would come here and hide out, even have church service, waiting for the boats to come pick them up and take them to Sweden. History is so powerful. I love traveling, I love seeing churches, I love experiencing different cultures, trying their different foods, cafes, everything, but just things like this that actually just tell you the story of people, the past, and that we can learn from the past and try to become better people across the world. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just really uh, just something. Get out, see the world, leave your village, break up with your high school sweetheart. I'm just kidding, don't, don't break up if you're in love, but get out and see the world. I know I keep saying this, but you need to have Yetta on your list when you come to Oland. This is the best hiking trail I have been on in a while. Literally, you're hiking, there's caves here, and then you make it to this wonderful oasis. So when you come to Yatta and you do the hiking trail here, pack a sandwich, pack some drinks, and just enjoy this quiet area right here by the river. It's so beautiful. We are here at Maria Ham, Maritime Quarter, and it is so beautiful. To this day, to this day, they still build boats here. Right now, currently, there are two boats being built here, and they're best known for wooden boats. Wooden boats being built here, wooden boats being built here at the harbor, and right behind me too, there is the Maritime Museum. They close at three though, so make sure you come early. But if you wanna see beautiful boat houses that are painted red, if you wanna see wooden boats, this is the place to be. This is the perfect place to catch the sunrise early in the morning. It's just really beautiful. It takes you back to the 1700s, if you know. <laughs> you lived there in the 1700s. Amelia is being built right now, and it's just so amazing that a boat this size with wood is being made in the Maritime Quarter still here in Maria um, Oland. And then when you look out, the boat is just 
literally just looking out at the ocean, the sea, ready to just take that plunge into those waters. I think what separates Olin from Puerto Rico, Ibiza, the Bahamas, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic is just its history and culture. It's so rich finding a place like this that's split between Sweden and Finland, but owned by Finland, but has its own flag, its own culture, its own history, and the fact that they speak Swedish here. Like, I'm literally at the Mar I'm literally in the Maritime Quarter and they still make boats here. It's it's just crazy and just just breathtaking, honestly. Driving around this island or islands, isles, driving around Olin Islands. Never thought I would come here. And if you're thinking about coming here, you should come to Olin. I'm telling you right now, this is the place to be. Olin definitely has a piece of me, definitely has a piece of my heart in the most positive manner.